the song. <laughs> yeah, I feel like rain CPS don't need more damage. I think they need I feel like uh I feel like Machinist needs more damage, but Dancer Dancer is the Dancer's the best it's ever been. Dancer, they should not touch Dancer. Uh I feel the opposite. Like uh, we're party buffs. We we are the we buff the party. There's a utility with our ability that we provide for the party. Because I I've had to improve my skill as dancer a lot to understand how raid buffs work and staying within raid windows. Because I I affect the raid window more than any other player with my tech step. It's crazy. Um, well, if you look at the, if you look at flat DPS for a dancer, yes, it's consistently going to be on the lower end, just with the other range. But my R DPS, like what I contribute to the raid, is, is pretty much always the higher. Like how much damage I provide the entire raid throughout it is, is hot. It's really high. And it, which it should be. Yeah, which what should. Be. Uh, I do think if we're talking about specific range improvements. They need to change improv. Improv sucked last year and it sucked this year. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it effectively did nothing. In instead of a temporary e sprit gauge on the entire party, I now give a temporary healing fusion. Because sitting still for 15 seconds to apply the exact same amount of buff as shield samba is. I mean, Black Mage is Black Mage is already in the top five. Like it, it does more damage than Reaper. And, and you haven't been playing the game as long as some of us, but they've done it in the past. The Black Mage was the top job, and there were huge community problems because of it. Like, you, like, if you, like, think of the most toxic players you've ever played in this game, they were all Black Mage memes. At, during that time. Like, they, they've specifically, they will never let Black Mage be top DPS again because it, it creates, it's, toxic players in the community. Like, it causes problems. That's why they have melee up at the top. And the reason melee is up at the top is because they're much more complicated jobs to play. There's a steeper learning curve, more combos to get into the raid windows. Whereas, uh, whereas range classes have more fluidity and they tend to have easier combos. I mean, hell, Bartleby has one fucking GCT button. I think Samurai specifically has gotten easier. Have a good night. I think Samurai specifically has gotten easier, but Ninja is complicated, Monk is complicated. Uh, people say Reaper is easy, but the people who are actually good at Reaper don't say that, and the numbers don't lie. Uh, I'm missing a melee job.
Yeah, they definitely need to improve Reaper's numbers because Reaper is left in the dust compared to the other melees. Dragoon, that's the other one. Dragoon is definitely complicated. Yeah, which is the difference between life and death for, for Dragoons, so, like, Dragoon in normal content is fine, but Savage, it's a steep learning curve. Every player I've known who's tried to do Dragoon in Savage, they switch jobs because it's, it's a lot. Yeah, figuring out you figuring out the jump windows is literally trial by fire, and it's a lot of stress on your healers as well. But the windows. Your, your jump windows are going to be different for literally every fight you do. Like, it, it isn't as simple as fitting stuff into your raid window because if you jump at the wrong time, you die. And certain mechanics are going off. Mm, not nearly as much. There's a reason the Dragoon's jumping off the edge is a meme. Yeah, we had that argument with our... They they weren't a Dragoon main, but they did Dragoon for a bit in the last static, and we literally had to have a talk with them just like, hey, uh, either take your Lucid Jump off your hot bar or put it in a way you will not actually hit it because you keep killing yourself during the mechanic, uh, misclicking it. But no, I... I I honestly want to give credit to the developers, though. They put an amazing amount of foresight into how the job works, and things are more balanced in the game now than they have ever been in the years I've been playing. Mm. Shadowbringers was pretty good as well. Stormblood was a nightmare. They had so many balancing issues in Stormblood. It looks... Machinist would be and fine then? if it... Uh, potency the output was so low. So that's, that's really the only fix it needs. Yeah, Machinist... Yeah. Well, it's... They didn't really nerf anything in Endwalker. They've just... They've been fully buffing things. So they basically just haven't increased anything for Machinist. Well, it's not just because of the winning stats. Machinist was also literally the most broken game, uh, job in the game in Stormblood. Yeah, it was. But, like, they, they carry that with them in how they think about jobs. They don't want to accidentally make Machinist broken again. They're nervous, and so they leave it. They're just like, well, it's fine where it is because it's not causing problems. I don't know. I find that hard to believe because they've always had melee in the upper tiers of damage. Like that's that's yeah. always been a core mechanic of the game. Like I don't see them changing that. Yeah.
Yeah. I do think, uh... Yeah, well, they're, they're not. <laughs> On the player average, they're not. The ranged are literally the last three jobs at the bottom, with Machinist being the worst. Uh, I mean, I don't think you have the same measure for what is meant to be as as what the developers have for the game. They've, kind of, they've always had it so that melee are supposed to deal more damage. They tend to do more complicated jobs. So like that is that is intentional on their part. Yeah. I, I do think that Red Mage and Summoner specifically do need higher potencies. I think they should be a little bit more on par with Black Mage. Because uh, Black Mage is in the top five. It deals more than Reaper and I think Dragoon? Uh... And is it is it Samurai that's top right now? Uh, Samurai is top by like a pretty Yeah, and I believe it's it, Monk it next. No. Maybe. That happens consistently with Samurai specifically though. I, yeah, it's probably the easiest to play out of all the uh, melee. I will say that. I, I just, I disagree. I specific, I specifically have challenges with pretty much all the noun samurai melee. Like dragoon feels easy to play in normal content, but when I look at my numbers, they're abysmal. Like I'm definitely not a good dragoon player. It's 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 a it has it's really easy to play dragoon and feel like you're doing good and you're actually not. Yeah, there there is there is so much optimization. Plus the boom, I think it's the most intensive uh, position in the melee job. M maybe, I was going to say, maybe with Monk. I know Monk, Monk is awfully complicated in set up right now. It was a cursed class. People would play Monk and Savage, and everyone would just be like, you poor soul, good luck. That's not a bad move. Yeah, they they continually close the gap and then instantly make it wide again. Like that's been pretty consistent over time. They're always trying to improve on that. I mean, they do naturally uh, make older content easier. Like, yeah. Like I said, there's there's a lot of balancing. There's a lot of balancing. It, it's hard to make things uh, more doable for savage players without making normal content super easy. Uh.
Honestly, I think mach machines could afford to have uh, just a little bit more utility, and uh, they they need to desperately change Cancer's improv. They really do. Yeah. Oh, did you want to try? Yeah, I'm. It's on my to watch list. I think. I still, I, I still want to watch the Tamers is so good. Okay, wow. First of all, Leomon died for those kids. Okay. Okay, but like, when they were facing the Dark Masters, which is the arc I'm currently on, Leomon was the only one that died. I want to say like, well over a dozen Digimon died to help these kids to beat the Dark Masters. Like, it's a lot. It's a pretty fun, it's a pretty fun little cartoon. Uh, it's not like, it's not like super serious though. It's something that's like you can watch just casually. I mean, okay. Well, if we're talking about Digimon, if we're talking about Digimon, there's so many, like, purposefully sexy Digimon. And, like, that's a thing. You'll... I haven't seen it yet, but I'm curious to watch it because they finally gave all the other Digimon Mega Forms. Otherwise, it is. It is literally just, uh, in the original, it's just, it's just Agumon and Goblin are the only two to get it. And I was so upset when it finished, and it's like, we didn't get naked to the other two. Like, I was waiting this entire time, and they did, they did Patamon so dirty the entire season. They made him wait so long to become Angemon and Magda Literally becomes Magda Angemon in the final three episodes. Yes. No, no sooner. I am on episode 51 of 54, and he is, turns into en Magna Engemon next episode. I am not okay with that. <laughs> Which is weird, because he's, he's just an ultimate. Like... Yeah. They did that to Kari too. They're like, we added Kari way too late, so at the same time, we gave her a champion. <laughs> and then, yeah, and the story is like, and the, the in world explanation is like, oh, Gatomon doesn't ever de 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 digivolve to Salomon uh, because my oldest mom tortured her for her whole life. So she, yeah, she just got stronger from being tortured every day. Like that's not a good explanation. Thanks, Demon. <laughs> yeah. Re Rewatching. I think Tamers had a slightly. Tamers is they were trying to follow the audience that had been watching them, so they they increased the age consumption of the of the show and then frontier came back on they're like all right new generation young kids again i have 
I didn't even watch Frontier. I, I didn't... I never watched Digimon Frontier because I could, I was like, why are these people turning into Digimon? That doesn't make any sense. My my favorite Digito team is from the uh, movie, Willis. He's got my two favorite Digimon, uh, Terriermon and Lotmon. It's the movies are good. Anyways, the Digimon movies are technically not spin-offs, though. They're just at different points in the story. Cause, like, Try is a direct sequel to the original adventure series. Well, both, technically, because Adventure 2 is a sequel to... It's a continuation of Adventure. It's, like, the same character in the universe. They're actually making a... They're gonna make a second Try run with the, with the Adventure 2 characters. Then they, then they made Tamers, and they're like, oh yeah, the first two seasons are just a television show on Tamers. And I was just like, I was not... That's like my only complaint about Tamers, is I wanted those kids to be the same. Yeah, Digimon Adventure 1 and 2 are a television show in Digimon Tamers. They are not the same numbers. No, no, no. Tamers is all one. Yeah, ever since I started Tamers, every consequence season has been its own universe ever since. Digimon. Wow. What did send it to me? What'd you send him? Oh, I see it. Okay. Who is that dragon from? I don't know who that is, oh, but okay. Oh, okay. So it's just some of these furry characters. Got it. Scaly character, whatever. Same thing. Yeah, it's a completely different story, but I haven't watched it yet, so no spoilers. Um, yeah, it, it looks interesting, but I don't know why. 
They like drastically changed the story from what I understand. Like it's a completely different show. My plan is to eventually watch them all. Because I watched the first three seasons and their subsequent movies, uh, but I've never seen any Digimon past it. I mean, they're adults who try. Yeah, well... Yeah, although there is a... There's a new character in Try. There's actually nine Digi Death Kids in Try. Yeah. She, she's completely original to Try. Uh, she has a Digimon, uh, a champion Digimon uh, called Me. I think it's called Meikumon. It's a cat Digimon that's based off of the main Doom cat that's supposed to be like a counterpart to that. So, like, they both did evolve from, uh, that one. I mean, Gato is cat. Yeah. But I wish they'd, uh, it'd be cool if they, if they brought Willis back into the fold with other Disney Destiny. I'd like that. He was really cool in the movie. Yeah, it's, I don't remember everything that happened in the show either. It's been too long for me. Uh, but I know Ken was like the bad guy for a while. And then... But yeah, I know, obviously there was, uh, Kari and TK came back from the first show. And we're still busy Destin. I really like that. I felt they got the short end of the stick in the first show, so I was very happy to see them return as main characters again. Yeah. Look at the other kids are the same age as them. They were a lot, they were several years younger than the other kids just first show who are literally all the same school age. Yeah. They technically didn't stop being Digi Destined, it was just a different prophecy with different Digi Destined. Like, the, the end of the first show pointed out that there were other Digi Destined across the world. Which is why I was upset when Tamers was a whole different universe, because it's just like, you have the- You guys built a really big world with Digimon and characters, you could've- They could've gone to other regions of the world with new Digidestin. I thought it would've been way cooler, but they didn't. Yet yeah, Tamers was really good though, I will say that. I think I think Tamers is only second to a Digimon Adventure in, as far as how well the seed was. Yeah. I think I think people wanted a, a nostalgia run to try. The first the first couple episodes were popular with people, but I think that interest died out when it, it became its own show, which it should. I don't think everything should be a nostalgia trip when they bring things back. Yeah. Yeah, they've been good, like, I know Frontiers, they've a squad. Huge and messy with all the time. Uh, we're all very different from each other. Like, almost, almost too different, in my opinion.
Also, they don't make shows uh, as long as Digimon anymore. They usually do 12 episode seasons instead of the 50 something they used to do. Yeah. Cause did, well, Digimon was back in the day when they uh, used to run the show every every weekday. has come so far though like animation takes so much more time to have really good quality nowadays like if you look if you look back at the or original Digimon runs like they stitch together and reuse a lot of stuff like all the Digimon transformations are constantly reused so there's a there's a lot of scenes in the footage that they put together and they had to do that to get it out on time if they do that with shows nowadays it's too low range. People want really high quality stuff in television shows nowadays. It makes it hard to put it out in a family fashion. I mean, Harley Quinn specific, the Harley Quinn show specifically, uh, I want to say the third, the third season took like two and a half years to make for 12 episodes. Have a good night. Oh, I don't think that's going to be seen a lot of the AI art, they kind of, it's definitely higher quality than, uh, what do they call it, NFTs, but it seems it kind of comes in the same vein as NFT in that it's, it's high quality but extremely impersonal. I think I'm going to hop off this point tonight, so I